If we have a hollow tube, sound waves will bounce back and forth within the tube, and only certain frequencies will resonate. Only certain frequencies will set up standing waves along the tube. And what we're going to do here is we're going to derive exactly what value of the frequency will resonate within the tube. So let's say we have a tube, and we're going to call the length capital L. And one thing uh, to keep in mind is that sound is a longitudinal wave. So the air molecules within the tube, everywhere along the tube, are vibrating left and right here in the diagram. When you look at the lower diagram, which is showing our classic standing wave at its two extremes, so that this diagram really helps us visualize that the nodes are along these points and the antinodes are halfway in between the nodes. Don't think of it as a transverse wave like the air molecules are going this way, but this is the location where the pressure oscillates the most dramatically, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, whereas at the nodes is where the pressure is more or less a constant middle value. But we draw it like almost like it's a transverse wave because that's just easier to draw, easier to visualize. Now, the way we're going to derive the resonant frequencies is that the resonant frequencies are determined by the boundary conditions. And that term boundary conditions is a mathematical or, or a physicist language for putting certain criteria or conditions at certain points. And in this case, the certain points are going to be the ends of the tube here and here. If the tube is wide open on the end, then the air molecules are very free to wiggle a lot. And so that point would be an antinode. Whereas if we close off the end of the tube, then the air molecules are not free to wiggle left and right there. So therefore that's going to be a node. So these are our conditions. And I'm going to make a little bit more room here. Let's go ahead and do our derivation. What we're looking for is a relationship between L, the length of the tube, and the frequencies. Let's start off our derivation with this case where the tube is closed at both ends. If it's closed at both ends, then both ends have to be nodes. So if we call this node one end of the pipe, then the length of the pipe could be this length. That is, from one node to the next node, which is one half of the wavelength. So I'll write L is equal to one half lambda. But the length of the pipe could also be two halves lambda. So L is equal to two halves lambda. That's kind of a funny way. Of course, that's just equal to lambda. But I'm going to write it as two halves lambda for reasons that will become clear in a second. The length of the pipe could also be three halves lambda. Or the length of the pipe could be four halves lambda, which of course is just two lambda. But I hope that you're now seeing the pattern. One half lambda, two halves lambda, three halves lambda, four halves lambda. To generalize that, L can be any integer multiple of half lambda. So I'm going to write that as L is equal to n lambda over two, where n is any integer, one, two, three, etc. Now in this derivation I was pretending like we had different lengths of the tube but in reality we're just going to have a single length of the tube and we're going to have a variety of different wavelengths. So let's solve for the wavelengths. Lambda is equal to multiply both sides by the 2, divide both sides by the n, and we will have 2L over n. And these are the various wavelengths that will exist within a tube of length L that is closed at both ends. When we talk about sound, 
it's much more convenient to talk about the frequencies. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve here for the frequencies. F is V over lambda, V over 2L over N. We have a fraction in the bottom of a fraction, so we're going to flip and multiply. And we have N V over 2L. And this is our set of frequencies that can exist inside a tube that is closed at both ends. Now, this combination, V over 2L, we're going to give that a special name. That is F naught. It's called the fundamental. It's the lowest frequency out of the set of all the harmonics. So the frequencies that you get in a tube that is closed at both ends are N times F naught, where F naught is equal to V over 2L and N is equal to 1, 2, 3, any integer. This is our final result for a tube that is closed at both ends. This is also the same result you get with a tube that is open at both ends. That is, if you have antinodes at both ends, you can see that the mathematical conditions here would all be identical. Just shift this entire diagram over by this amount, and everything else would be exactly the same. These equations over here are also the frequencies that would be inside a tube that is open at both ends. What if you have a tube that is open at one end and closed at the other? In that case, the closed end will be a node, just like in our previous derivation, but the open end, the air molecules are free to vibrate, and therefore that will be an antinode. How does the derivation change in that case? Well, this is still going to be our node here, but now the other end of the tube can be here. And this distance from here to here is one quarter of a wavelength. Remember, node to node is half a wavelength, so from node to the nearest antinode is one quarter of lambda. The tube could also have a longer length, a node here, and going to the next antinode, which would be along here. And that is where L, we're talking about lambda over 4 here, plus going from this antinode to this antinode would give us an additional half of a lambda so in other words, we have three quarters lambda. Or the tube could be this long, where we add another antinode to antinode distance, another half wavelength. And so L is equal to five quarters lambda. Or just to continue the pattern, one more example. The tube could be an additional half wavelength from this antinode to this one, and that is 7 quarters lambda. So let's look at the pattern we have. We have 1 quarter lambda, 3 quarters lambda, 5 quarters lambda, 7 quarters lambda. The length of the tube can be any odd multiple of 1 quarter lambda. L is equal to n lambda over 4, but now where n is equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. The odd integers. And just like before, we were pretending that the length of the pipe was variable, but really, for a given pipe, the length doesn't change. But what we're really describing here is that we have different lambdas within the same pipe. So if we solve for lambda, we have 
4L over N. And then the frequencies are V over lambda, V over 4L over N, fraction in the bottom of a fraction. So we flip and multiply, and we are left with the frequencies are N V over 4L. Like we did before, V over 4L, we're going to call that the fundamental frequency. And so we are left with F is equal to N times F naught. F naught is V over 4L now, and N is equal to the odd integers. So here's our final result for a tube that is open at one end and closed at the other. The fundamental frequency is half of the fundamental frequency for the tube that is closed at both ends. So it has a lower fundamental frequency. However, the multiples, the harmonics, are the odd multiples of this fundamental instead of every integer multiple of the fundamental in the case of the tube that is closed at both ends.